Again, we got Charlie here, the horse Angie and I started. Um, now we've done round yard with him, groundwork, and now we're transferring the, gr the ground yard work and the groundwork up to this sitting position. And we're virtually going to do everything the same. Everything's identical in this method. Now I got them in a halter, but I prefer to train them in a, a bridle because a bridle is a better communicator than a halter. But he's, because we've been doing him from a little fella, he's actually, you know, we're training his mind, not his mouth. So, you know, we saw him jumping and bucking around earlier. It makes no difference. It's still always about controlling the nose and the head position. And you can see he's just there waiting and everything. So what I'm going to do, like on the ground, we had um, what we call our hippies. And what I'm after here is his head stay down so that so that he's balanced and centered. And I want this front foot to step over. That's good. Now that front foot step over is the most important thing we teach. Now, we've been teaching our horse to find his own head position. I don't want to be holding it there. Now his head position at the moment, where his pole's level with that wither, means the energy can flow. Even if his nose comes up that much, the energy goes up and backwards, which is turns into rearing, bucking, whatever. So there are issues when we come to lead changes, um, getting flex into the next circle and whatever. So I, got, I want this horse flex, and I'm keeping my hand down near my knee here to keep the head, to get this flex. Now, if he was to start pulling, I would lock my hand down. Let's see how he flexed he is there. And I would tap him and I use his energy to get the soft. Okay, so we do, on the ground we did our hippie. Go forward, go whoa. Now, I can't, I'm just asking him to back up. But I need his head down like that so it's more efficient for him and he's a beautiful, beautiful horse. And we love him very much. Now, what we got here as he collects up is, you'll see him raise and collect himself there, and, that, and we're training these muscles. So basically, to train these muscles, we've got to think of ourselves as a weight lift coach. So what you just saw me then was lift him up, lift up the muscles. He did a great job. He found efficiency there. He was able to do the task easier, and then we released the muscle like a weight lifter. So what I want here is I'm going to just get that hip around, tap him around. Now, what we found is by tapping the go button behind me here with my right hand, sends the horse forward, and it's much easier for him to go, whoa, back off. So the next thing I want this horse to do is to side pass. So I'm just gonna tilt his nose over, and I want him to lift up and elevate, but I need more energy, and his nose has to go down, like into there, and I want him to elevate, teach him not to pull down, but to elevate. And I just get that hip around. Good boy. Okay, so... I'll just show that again. So, I won't be able to get this rope around any old way. Now, what I'm going to do is put weight in my left stirrup, bring my chin around so it makes it easier for my horse to maneuver into what I want him to do. So what I'm doing here, just asking him to listen to this rain, to just ask him to come around, like come off that rain. And the problem here is his head position. He's got to keep that head down because he's wasting energy. So I've just got to work the shoulders, that means a bit more. So I want this. And I can see the head making it so that he's actually working 10 times harder than if he was to just do the task. And that's how we're going to teach him. I want that head there. Beautiful. And I'm lifting myself up with him, moving in that direction. Okay. So, you know, they're not always going to be um, listening to you. So if I had too much trouble with this holder, I'd just quickly put the bridle on get what I want because it's a better tool, a better communicator, and come back to the holder again later. It doesn't make any difference. So I want him to lift and move. Now I want him to go forward. Now what I've got here is weight in my right stirrup as touch, lifting up my... In so it's had a tendency to want to run out the shoulder every now and then. So what I did, I did a hippie and tap him forward like that. Now, as he lifted his head up, the energy got thrown out that shoulder. 
because the weight's pushing it all over there. Okay, so what I had to do, and you know, it doesn't have to be perfect or I don't, just because I only just want to try and show him and just this nice light touch on the rain should be enough to ask him what I want. But instead he argued, but that's all right, it's up to me to teach him that arguing doesn't work. Okay, go work. Do a hippie if he didn't listen, now back him up. Hippies are a major safety feature. Stops bucking and rearing. Um, we've got to see our hippie as a multi-purpose knife. It's got many, many purposes. Through our hindquarters, we control the front legs. So by doing hippies, I can get this horse anywhere where I want to go. Hippie looking, go. Now, I just would like him to come around like that. Now what I'm doing is putting the weight in my left stirrup with my chin around, I'm trying to through my seat and a little bit more energy and he needs that head down. Then I go work, back up. Now, you know, like today, he's being a little bit more defiant than normal, but it's hot. So what, who cares? It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, he's only a baby. I'm so privileged to be able to be on him like this. So it doesn't matter if today is not great for him, All right? So that's good. Now, the kissing means move and he has to work out what I want. I'm just gonna move the shoulder over a little bit. And see, that was beautiful. So I say thank you for that. Okay, so I'm gonna bring him back around, bring my hand low, get that hip around, go forward. I'm just gonna to touch him here, asking him, because what I wanna do with my horse is show him a better way. Prove to him my way is better. So if I can just touch him like that and come over, so he's saying no, no. So he's actually working harder than I'm asking for. I'm saying, please bring that over. Please come in. Please come around. Please come around. So he's not interested in doing that at the moment, but he's actually, it's actually harder for him. It's actually harder for him to do what he's doing because I'm just saying, please go over there, please go over there. And you can see his head's all wrong and he doesn't want to do it. Now, sometimes we have to, it can be just the ego to ride in a halter because our horse is going, well, you know, I need more clearer instructions and the bridle is a better tool in that regard. So, you know, so what, it doesn't work, who cares? I can put the bridle on and get exactly what I want and then go back to the halter. All right, good boy.